Mletsi stood above Wanyanyekavu as he slept, awakened by his presence, he saw another person with him. Mletsi. Wanyanyekavu said as he slowly got up. Who is this? It seems as if I know him. Mletsi smiled and said, This is your guardian angel or henge guardian, in your tongue, but his name cannot be pronounced or spoken in your language, you may call him Yael. Yael stood there with a blank look on his face. He stood about nine feet tall, muscular, with long hair down to his waist. Slowly he nodded his head to say hello. Wanyanyekavu looked at Yael and said, You're not the talkative type, are you? Mletsi smiled as Yael replied, No. Wanyanyekavu asked, Why do you look so familiar? Yael said calmly, When you were five, you picked up a stick and started swinging it like a sword. That stick became a sword, and it was then that I started teaching you how to wield that sword. When you were nine, you fell asleep outside your home, and a snake was headed toward you, I stopped him from attacking you, and there's a time you were asleep and were awakened by my presence. When I was about to leave, you woke up, looked up at me, and said, Oh, it is you, and went back to sleep. Wanyanyekavu's memory was brought back to him as Yael spoke, saying, Yes, I do, I do remember that. Yael continued, Three weeks ago, you almost drowned, it was I that lifted you so you could grab that limb from the tree. Mletsi stood there and politely interrupted, Yael will train you today. As he disappeared, Yael came at Wanyanyekavu with full force. Wanyanyekavu dodged Yael's approach and threw a punch toward him, but it went right through him. Then Yael kicked Wanyanyekavu, and he flew out of the tent into some bushes. After fifteen minutes of fighting, Wanyanyekavu said in frustration, How is this training? I cannot land one punch because they go right through you. Yael said sternly, This day forward, you must fight in the spirit. Understand this, because you are already flesh, you can truly defeat the flesh, but if you fight in the spirit because you're already flesh, you can defeat both. The flesh cannot fight spirit, and spirit cannot fight the flesh, only the spirit within the flesh. Why do you shun and don't use it? Until now, no one has been able to, so I will teach you how to fight in the spirit. You will teach others. Pointing at a log, he commanded Wanyanyekavu, sit. Yael motioned as if he was throwing something at him, but his hands were empty. Before he knew it, Wanyanyekavu saw a water bag coming toward him, as he grabbed it. Drink. Yael said. This leather skin bag you now drink from was not in my hand before I threw it, to you, that is. But I had manifested it in the spirit, and it became tangible before it left my hand. You must learn to fight in the spirit from this day forward. For fighting in the spirit will always conquer the flesh. Wanyanyekavu was confused, and Yael saw the confusion in his eyes. Yael said. Teach me your fighting style as if I'm your student, before you finish, you will no longer be confused. Wanyanyekavu was excited yet nervous as his heart was beating like a drum, for he was always the student but never the teacher. He stood up. Yael, you're my first student. Yael gave him a half-smile, I am not, by far, your last. Wanyanyekavu was shocked at the smile and didn't hear what Yael had said because it baffled him that Yael had even smiled. Wanyanyekavu said, Okay, first a brief history. My style is a mixture of African, Asian, and Native American martial art handed down from generation to generation in my family called Poing or Hands. Yael said, After we are done, it will no longer be its name, it will be called Poing de Dieu or Hands of God. 